You're listening to pre Cana with the Pope, a podcast aimed at restoring confidence in marriage and family life. Hey there, everyone. This is Monica, and welcome to episode 80 of pre Cana with the Pope. In today's episode, we talk about life with ADHD. Together, we discuss the difficulties faced both personally and in our relationship, how we're trying to parent neurodivergent children, and ultimately how important it is to be honest and vulnerable with your spouse about the fullness of who you are. We're so happy you're here with us. Let's jump in. So we're back with another episode of pre Cana with the Pope. And before we start, um, well, okay. So just let's, let's be, I want to be honest and real and very clear. Are you normally deceptive? And- I'm super deceptive. <laughs> I never know which direction I'm talking from. Um, I, we love doing this. We, we show up, we love just being able to record. It's such a privilege to be able to reach as many people as we do and, um, get, we get messages every week, just whether either messages or emails about the topics and, and how we're able to reach other people. And it's always been a privilege. And, um, if you could please support us in that, and it's really not a big ask, it's not a lot from you, but if you could just go ahead and rate mm-hmm. this podcast on Apple and Spotify. So I was looking through our Spotify, we're actually pretty high up on Spotify in terms of our like our ratings. But if you, and, and I know that usually when I rate something, it's not because the person told me to do it that I'm listening to. Um, but if you could not I, be like me. I will say, that there was one week where we had two new comments, two new reviews yeah. on Apple, and our downloads that week were significantly higher than they had been. Yeah, in like previous weeks. So something with the it algorithm, makes a it just reached different people. Difference. So so if you could thank just you help for us those out reviews. There. Yeah, and then honestly, and then also for those of you that are able to, to that are getting more out of the show, or maybe which is are just able to support us a little bit more um support us on patreon we just got a new patreon subscriber yes. which is thank you rebecca thank you rebecca so much for supporting this pasta and um supporting it financially it helps us to pay for the subscriptions and some of the things that we do um and we're just really grateful that you um that you think that this kind of thing is worthy so that it can reach um, other couples start conversations and yeah we're i I get blown away whenever we have a new oh patron. Goodness. I'm just I'm like, like, oh, thank you. I'm so not thank worthy. you, Rebecca. We're not worthy. <laughs> no. That is more because I have wounds that make me feel that worthy. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you for so the So millennial support. of you. So millennial. So many wounds. All right. Well, uh, and speaking of reaching out to us and sharing your thoughts with us, um, someone reached out to us this week about wanting to hear more about um kind my, of wounds, like, my wounds my wounds <laughs> but like reaching back to one of our former our previous episodes of adhd and then you had mentioned it again in our last episode and and how it's helping us to relate to our kids a little bit better and understand them a little bit better and we gave the example of um you having to get ready in the morning for something for oh for a photo shoot mm-hmm. and like just pick a shirt and like you can't and and um seeing some of those tendencies in our kids so um one of our listeners asked, can you just share a little bit more about ADHD and neurodivergence and, and how what they ask? They, did they say specific? I don't remember the question. Sorry. I did read your email too. It did. I have the question. It was about like, did it relating to being husband and father? Sorry. And this just is just all of it, like relationships with uh, husband and father and parent and yeah. And uh, I know sibling, like all it that. sounds very niche. And like, if you don't have any ADHD, you might be like, this is not for me. Uh, maybe you're right. I don't know. But, uh, but, one thing I know as a, I don't listen to this podcast, but I do. Well, I do actually, I, I edit all of it. So I have to listen to everything over again. Um, but one thing I've realized is that as we start talking about things, like different things come up. And I think that if you're listening and you're like, oh, this is episode may not be for me. Like I would say, just listen anyway, because something will connect, something will click. Yeah. Uh, God uses so many different things to, to, to be able to, to, you know, poke at our hearts and it shows areas we need to grow in. Um, so yeah, so just, Hang in there. Yeah, and, uh, keep listening. I think listening. There, there might be something good here. Our conversations, we, we go on a lot of tangents, so you never know where this will go. Yeah. So we're going to start with this topic and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, so if you haven't, if you, it, I'm pretty open about talking about my ADHD because uh, I, one, I, I think I've, my speaking of it has helped other people who either didn't realize they had it and mm-hmm. have it or who have it and didn't take 
it as seriously of like, I need to actually mm-hmm. put things in place because I have a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I like being open about it. I'm mean, like, well, that's why we have a podcast. I like being open about all this, everything that we go through, because I think um, it allows other people to not feel so alone. And yeah. then, or at least to be able to have conversations about things with their spouse. Yeah. So like, there's just a lot of good things. So like, yeah, I'm open book. I'm I'm happy to answer the questions. I forgot what they were. I'll ask them. I but if she could ask them. I also, I, sorry, I'm going to add to what you were just saying though. But yes. like I, as a former teacher and then now as a parent, I'm grateful for all of like the research that you've done to learn more about mm-hmm. ADHD and neurodivergence. Um, and then now as your spouse too, to understand you better because it was something that we didn't know about for eight year, almost eight years of our marriage. Like we didn't know no, right. this about you. Yeah, you had a you know you had an adult diagnosis, and um, I feel like our relationship has been transformed by by this better understanding of how your brain works. Absolutely. Um, so I'm grateful for it, and and, and I've I not think, been using it as an excuse, but it's a lot. It's more of like like my skin is darker. <laughs> so I should need less sunblock. <laughs> so it's just, it, it, yeah. there's a whole story behind that. But yeah, so. <laughs> but like, it's just, it's a thing I have and therefore things around me are a little bit different. Right. But it's not. And yeah. like as a former teacher, you would think that I would had would have had a better understanding of it, but no, like I had pretty no, much but, stereotypical yeah. understanding of like ADHD boys fidget. Like <laughs> that's mm-hmm. about it. And they don't yes. like to listen. I fidget with my feet and you don't see it in my sneakers, but I my know. socks are destroyed. Your socks always have a hole in them. Same in the spot. Same spot. Same spot. <laughs> from yep. shuffling your feet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, all right. Um, so the listener asked a question. Let's see, which one should we start with? Clearly this show is scripted. <laughs> No, he asked a lot of really good questions, and I guess I just want to pick one that will like set the conversation going. I guess. All right. So, what are some difficulties that are presented by ADHD? That's so broad. Everything. Hmm. Uh, I don't. That's such a. Uh, well, one that you talked about. Well, I feel today like on the way home. That's too. Yeah. I, uh, okay. Um. Oh, this is the way I explain it to the kids. This is this is better. Okay. Um. Because so again we have we have two three kids that we suspect are like me, yeah. So um, two for uh, sure we're, we're very confident, and then one is becoming older. So now we can see it. Yeah, him. we can see. It more. <laughs> it's just it's funny, but but it's amazing because like all right, they 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 show different tendencies, but their personalities are so different. It doesn't affect the way like who Uh-oh. they are. Oh yeah, it's just they're like the way they children. function is a little yeah. different. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're they're they are bo- all three are very unique in the way they present. Um, but one of the things I explained to, to one of them, um, because they said to me, I don't want to do this mm-hmm. and, and it, oh no, no, they did a hard thing. They did a hard thing. And then afterwards someone like walked in front of them and they started screaming and yelling and like, they walked in front of me, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I said, I said, look, I was like, right now you are crying because you just did something very hard. And it's like, you have zero stars. And they looked at me and I said, okay. At the beginning of the day, you start the day with 10 stars. Everyone starts the day with 10 stars. But because you're a little bit like me, doing hard things gets you down to zero stars. Now, also because you're like me, seeing people and talking to people does not give you more stars. You don't gain more stars from Mm -hmm. that. You gain more stars from being in quiet or or having a little snack or like there's little things you do throughout the day that gives you more stars, right? And that you really enjoy doing and then you go do it off on your own. Yes. Okay, so people like mommy, when she goes to talk to people, she gets all her stars back. You and I don't. So right now you're upset, not because this person walked in front of you, because they didn't do anything. They just walked in front of you. They didn't hit mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. They just happened to stand in a place that just sets you off. But I was like, right now you have zero stars, so you're just upset. Yeah. Because you have zero stars. No yeah. other reason. And they looked at me. Okay. And then they went and sat, sat, yeah. sat down. Yeah. But like that's so like that, in terms of like what is difficult. I, it, it's hard to pinpoint at the time, but like Life. I can go throughout my day and say yeah. like, this is hard, this is not, but it's, it's really, I've come to realize like there's things that, um, that sometimes I have to do just because it's, it's hard and I just have to do it. Yeah. And the other times it's, it's, I can go off like energy and excitement, but, um, the, the, the star analogy helps me understand like, I, and I don't really use it for myself when I do my self talk or whatever. Um, but if I, if I have to go, I don't know, like even just play with the kids today. Like there was, I was tired and um, I forgot which one of them asked me, like, do you want to play? 
I absolutely did not want to play, but I did it mm-hmm. because I know I'm supposed to. And I know I can. Like, I still have autonomy. I think a lot of times, like, people use ADHD or other disabilities mm-hmm. to feel like you can't do, like, you can. It is just extremely difficult. And, and yeah. the analogy of, like, a wall of awful yep. is a perfect analogy. Like, that's what I feel like. There's just literally a wall in front of me, and I can't get through it, can't get over it. Like, yeah. It's just, I, and, um, but you can. It just takes so much more out of you than it yeah. would a, average person yeah. or a typical person. But yeah, so often one thing that can be tricky with the kids is that they like compare themselves to one another. Some like that's just mm-hmm. natural with siblings. So I remember you even explaining this to to the child um saying like so and so wakes up with 10 stars and you have to go find the stars before you can really mm-hmm. even start your day. So, mm-hmm. so, so not even everyone, yep. not yeah. everyone starts with 10 stars. Like right. you had said that at the beginning of your explanation, yeah. but when you, I remember that distinctly because that was important for me to remember mm-hmm. that they have certain things that they've, they mm-hmm. have certain habits and tools that they've created for themselves to get to 10 stars to start the day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I have to allow them to do some of these like things to yeah. get to 10 stars. Right. So, um and then like in sorry if you think of video games like it's like that's how many life points yeah right 10 stars yeah right so so that has been a cool like visual for me and it's been a good way for us to talk to Mm -hmm. the kids and even for me to understand you a little bit better just like i have to go do a thing to like activate this like i have to go Mm -hmm. get my stars so that i can be prepared Mm -hmm. or or even the like I'm doing this, but I'm functioning on two stars right now. Mm-hmm. Like this is real. This is really challenging. I'm not. I don't feel fully prepared to mm-hmm. engage in whatever this might be. It might be, yeah. I need you to respond to an email, or it might mm-hmm. be, um, you know, with the kids, like I need you to to do some schoolwork or yeah. the things that are unmotivating right. to you with. And, and really what the stars mean is dopamine, <laughs> like it, in ADHD, right? No. No, I wouldn't say all of them do. Okay. Like it's it it's I I don't have a full grasp of like what's happening in my in within me chemically and like mm-hmm. with hormones or whatever. Um but like it's cuz sometimes it is like if it's dopamine driven though that's that's yes or no like like the phone is super dopamine like inducing or whatever mm-hmm. or it producing. Um but like I would say so in terms of stars like that it like a, um, the star analogy, what it fits for me is like emotionally, I feel stable. Um, I understand all of the rules, mm. and like all the expectations. Like there's a lot yes. of like social social things in, within it as well. Mm-hmm. So like that has nothing to do with like how I like the the high I get from doing it. Okay. Um, but like it's my like it's my level of of like awareness of of everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also and then like my mood is in a good place, and also like I'm not physically uncomfortable. Yeah. So like there's like layers of it. Yeah. So like. Like one of our kids hates being hot. Yes. Right. If it's hot outside, like I don't want to go out. It's hot. Like I, that's how I am. Like, yes. I don't want to be out. It's yes. Just hot. And it's like to this whole next level yeah, it's of like, like, I don't feel sticky. He will, he will search out shade. Mm-hmm. He will be so grouchy if he's out in the sun, mm-hmm. like playing his favorite mm-hmm. thing. Like he yeah. doesn't. Um, but unless like, see, you can get over that if like the other things are in place. Like emotionally, I feel fine. I'm like, I'm not hungry. Mm-hmm. I understand what we're doing right now. Like, okay, I'll go do it. Right. Mm-hmm. Or like, hey, go get the chickens. Like he'll do it even if it's hot, mm-hmm. right? But like it, it, it's such a tricky thing, and I think it. If I were to overanalyze it, I'd be very uh, paralyzed by the analysis. Like I would just, I would just like, am I in the right state of like I don't know. Uh-huh. So like you asked me like what things are hard, and like most things are hard, but they're not always hard. Sometimes they're super easy, mm-hmm. and I, I don't know exactly why, but I have these things in place that kind of that I kind of understand. Like if I'm within these parameters, I think I can get through the day. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like I. Um, and this is back to Orlando. Like there was days where like I was just super depressed Mm -hmm. and like I, and so that's your like emotional dysregulation. Yeah. I was super dysregulated emotionally. Like it, and I knew it was over, overreacting and I gave myself stars by making sure I went to the gym and I ate the way I needed to do. Like I, I took my breaks when I needed to take breaks. But even though I had stars, like I still like I it was never able to replenish to ten. Mm-hmm. Like I could never get there because everything else, like my environment was different. So like that's yeah. another whole different one. Like there's a lot of other things that I have to consider. Yeah. Um and it's because like you notice like all of those things and like you feel all of those things. It's like I feel it like so it it's so silly because I feel very 
um, I feel like a child a lot of times. And like I, and it's funny because I know that if people met me, they wouldn't think that. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's also because I've learned, I've learned to mask a ton. Okay. Tell, tell them about socially, like the things that you've watched and learned about. So no, there's, I, it, it's a uh, charisma university. I think it's on YouTube. Like yeah. I watched that in college yep. and, it, and it's, it's like, so it started, it started, I think as like a dating thing, like how, like what women, whatever. But it, I, I started watching it because it would say like, it would analyze different, um, like actors and people on like talk shows and like their social cues and like, mm-hmm. like, and it's now the videos are like what to do if you want, to, like if you're in a group and, and you want to be able to say a joke, like it, it, you like it, like it runs through different scenarios of showing like, this is how you could insert yourself. These are the things you could say. Mm-hmm. And then there's even people on Instagram now who like, who give you different, um, I, there's just it, basically what I've done and through YouTube and a whole bunch of other research online, like I've learned a ton of like different social scenarios and mm-hmm. like what are appropriate ways to respond and inappropriate yeah. ways to respond. Um, some of them I do naturally. Yeah. So like, but, but what was nice is like seeing that like, okay, those are That's, okay. Those are good. Yeah. Lean into those. Cause yeah, those come keep doing those, right? you. Like you're very, like one of them is about like when you, when, um, and I've taught this to the kids too, like when someone makes fun of you, yep. you laugh first and like, and, and no, like, like enjoy that you got made fun of. And like, it takes, it makes you seem more confident cause you're laughing at yourself. But like, yeah. I naturally do that. Yeah. Cause I, when people make a good joke and they, they really get me, I'm, yep. I think it's hilarious. Cause like, when yeah, they good. roast you. Yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah, good for you. Like I, I, I like that. <laughs> right. Good. And as long as they can take it back, but like, and, and though, even the way you roast people, like it can't be too direct. You can't get, you can't go at a weak point for them. Like, it's just, right. just a lot of little like nuances to it that I, like I learned, I didn't, Yeah. I didn't, some of them do, again, do come naturally to me. Others I had to learn and then practice. Yeah. And it seems, it seems like kind of crazy, but I, that's how I, I'm able to mask be, or not mask, but like I'm able to read situations better because yeah. I've, I've seen them and, and practiced them and, and like and be, studied them. Right. Yeah. And it just, I, I, and it sounds crazy, but like, that's how, like I see some of our kids yes. and they might be with their friends, but like, because the situation is different, they suddenly don't know what to do. And yeah. it's just, or like there might be in a, in a regular situation, like this is, this is your home, but new people came in. I don't yeah. know what to do anymore. And yeah. like, I, I feel that I feel that in my soul yeah. of like, things are a little bit different. I don't know what to do anymore. Yeah. Um, but and I, they, but, but and I, they like shut down mm-hmm. or they get really weird. Mm-hmm. Like they, ju- it's like two extremes of how they respond yes. to this like new scenario, mm-hmm. this new situation. Yeah. Well, and like myself, like I've learned to, if so, say it's a new scenario that I don't know how to function in, like I've learned to become comfortable and just like just sit on the sidelines and, and, yeah. and, and look and analyze and being quieter. Be quiet. Like you don't have to be the center of attention. Cause like, and that's, I know also. And I know because I know there's some of our youth group teens that like listen listen to this, and they've said to me like they would assume that I'm um, comfortable public speaking all the time, mm-hmm. which I'm not. Mm-hmm. Though I can, mm-hmm. right? I can, and it depends. Like I'm not always comfortable doing it. Like they be they think that I'd love to be the life of the party. Like I absolutely hate it. Mm-hmm. I'd like to be on the sidelines. Like it's it's just interesting. Um, but all of it is because of the social part of the ADHD, which is like, I don't know what the rules are. Mm-hmm. And it sounds silly because like, there's no rules. Like you, like in some, and this is, okay, so there's no rules, but I've done as much research as I can to like kind of figure out rules. And then yeah. I see you in social situations and you do things. I'm like, I would never do that yeah. because that's not, you don't do that. That's, that's not funny. And you, you should do it. Oh. And you're accepted and loved. I'm like, what the heck is this? I thought I had to work for this. No. Oh, people just like you? No, you can just be you're just, You can just be nice and just, and you can make a joke and laugh at your own jokes. It's fine. You're not supposed to laugh at your jokes, but you do it anyway. I know you yell at me all the time. Stop laughing at your jokes. <laughs> not supposed to. You just gotta make you gotta make a deadpan serious face. I think I'm funny. That's why it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's just it's funny because like you can function uh, completely oblivious to like the the little things that I've learned, and like you do it better than I do. And you're because you're very like you're very hyper aware of them, mm-hmm. and I'm I don't want to say I'm oblivious to them. Like it's not like I float through life like just being my own weird quirky self but like it just i can i can i don't know like read read the room better i don't know what would you say no i like see i see you as a lot more typical. free okay because it it's kind of like it i well and i don't know, i don't know if free is the right word but like it's kind of like if you see like if you see two kids like they're playing outside mm-hmm. 
in the mud and one is like in the bluey episode like one's worried about getting dirty and yeah. then it's just like i'm just playing yeah like i don't even know like wh- why does that matter it's yeah, like yeah. i kind of feel like the kid who's like but i'm gonna get dirty like i'm not supposed to get dirty yeah, yeah i'm yeah. not supposed to like there's rules yeah and you're just like no i'm just playing like there's there's yeah. a there's like a level of freedom to it um where i see you socially and then on top of it like you're getting energy from it so yeah. like you like it yeah i'm an extrovert mm-hmm. that's true so like that's also confounding yeah, um, you're an introverted ADHD year. <laughs> yeah, the extrovert ADHD years. I know a few. They are like superhuman. <laughs> it's insane. Yes. Like you, because like you, and I think they mask a lot less because they're constantly talking. So you eventually, like, if I talk enough, eventually you're gonna pick up. I'm like, oh, he talks really fast. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. he's like talking about super random things all of a sudden. Like that's yes, yes, sir. Yes. Um, sorry. What was, the question i was like what well, things are hard everything and everything nothing is hard time. but yeah so like one of them being socializing mm-hmm. and like and for for one of our kids like for helping them to like recognize like yes this is difficult for you mm-hmm. we try to prepare like we imagine what we're about to go to and like what kinds of things can you do when you first get there um and uh, i think i think we're more direct I think you're more direct when you do it. Okay. Like I've heard, I've heard you say like, okay, this is what's going to happen. Yeah. These are the possibilities. If this yeah. happens, if A, then B, if B, then C, right? If C, then E, like you give them like, this is how you're supposed to. And then, oh yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And then like, that kid feels like, oh, I, and then all of a sudden like they're ready for anything. Yeah. Because you give them all of those. Well, happen. but I guess like what I'm saying by like imagining it is like, they like to visualize it. Like they like to picture who they're going to see, oh, okay. who might be there what mm-hmm. is it going to, what is this room going to look like? Mm-hmm. You know, what, what should you do when you first get there? Mm-hmm. So for example, like going to school, they, they, that, that activity of getting to school and like that weird in between like classes haven't started yet. Mm-hmm. I don't have like an assignment yet. Mm-hmm. They hate that in between cause they just don't know where to put themselves and mm-hmm. what to do. So we've, we practice thinking and imagining it mm-hmm. and saying like, when you walk in, you say good morning to whoever is there. And then you well, go you know put your funny. bag away and you take your lunchbox out. And then you, yeah. you know, we, we go through the routine so that when they get there, they feel, Oh, I know what to mm-hmm. do. Like I, I, I know the quote unquote rules, like you're saying, you know, it's funny. So as you're saying that, so I remember as a teen and then like young adult, um, when I would go to things like say it's like a youth group meeting or like, I don't know, was, I'm thinking of church things, but like whenever I would I'd mm, go to a that's thing, where we just were. <laughs> right, whenever I'd go to a thing and, um, there was like downtime, I would always go find something to do, like put chairs away, clean yeah. the garbage. I could always go find yeah. something to do. Um, and people would be like, oh, Renzo's so helpful, but it really wasn't cause I was helpful. Like, I, yeah, I, yes, I was helpful objectively cause I was doing something I, to help people, but it was because there was nothing to do and it would drive me nuts yeah. to just stand there. Like we're not yep. doing anything. So I, I'd go find something. Yeah. Um, and that's where some kids get into trouble. Yes. Like, cause they create something to do mm-hmm. because they don't know what to do. But like, they... sorry, my, my, my point was gonna be though, I didn't translate that to home because like, even in the t- trying to go do something like that, what that was taking my stars away. Mm, so like mm-hmm. at home, I don't naturally like, there's nothing, nothing's happening. I need to go help. Yeah. Like there's nothing happening. <laughs> I have to go do something that's fun for me. <laughs> So like I do try, um, but like even that takes effort. Mm, like that's a mm-hmm. different. It's just a different. It's it's different. Like so outside the home, at least it's like acceptable to. I have to. Yeah. Go, I can't just go stand when. At least all right. Wait, actually, wait, wait. I remember. Oh, oh I, hate oh, it. I get so mad at this. We were helping set up for a wedding. This was years ago. We weren't married yet. We were dating. Do you remember that we had to set up for a wedding? No. Okay. We had to set up for a wedding it's for. Clearly for stuck someone. out to you more. It, it did no because we had to set up for the wedding. So that we were setting up the reception. And the job was set up the chairs. And then there was a person whom I won't say where they were related in terms of like the party of the, the wedding. Um, but they were just walking around, not doing anything instead of setting up the chairs. Mm. And that drove me nuts. And it was because, and I know this person and I'm assuming they may have something too. That's similar to what I have, but some people can say like, Oh, there's nothing to do. And then they'll just freeze. Yeah. And other people will be like, there's nothing to do. So other people with ADHD will be, there's nothing to do. And then they'll go do, they'll figure something out. Yeah. Um, so like some people, like you, some people could have husbands or wives who are just like, when there's no parameters, they will just do nothing. And yeah. Wait to be told. Yeah. And, and people, they just wander. And they just wander. And that drives me nuts. Mm-hmm. All right. Do you want another question now? Sure. I hope I answered something. <laughs> Starting conversations. Um, 
what are some tools that you have found help you through difficulties? Uh, okay. That's interesting. So, so through difficulty. So I'm going to interpret that as like doing a hard thing. Mm-hmm. So okay. not, not how to like manage throughout the day. Um, I have learned to just do the thing and that's not, I feel like that's the least helpful advice ever. her. <laughs> um, but like, I've had to just like, no, you just got to do it. It's just hard and you have to do it. Um, the quote I like, this is from a, um, secular podcast. Um, whose name I forgot. Oh no, the Chris Williamson podcast. He was, he was interviewing a guy named, um, Cameron Bertuzzi, I think. And he's a, like a, like a social media entrepreneur, but who's like, got super rich. Um, but they were just talking about, um, doing hard things. And the quote that he said that really stuck out to me. And it was one that like, I, that I heard it as I was l- starting to learn jujitsu, which like mm-hmm. helped me like stay focused on that too. But as, um, So like when did things get difficult? And I I say it for everything now, like when things are hard, whether it be like doing something difficult that should be easy. So like picking out a shirt that I should be able to pick out or it's like going to jujitsu class when I don't want to, or, you know, I don't know. There's a million hard things that you could be doing throughout the day. Orlando. Just anything hard. Mm -hmm. Um, The quote is, this is what hard feels like. And this is why most people can't do it Mm -hmm. because we do live in a culture that, that embraces comfort, embraces taking the easy way out for things. Um, and I want to be willing to embrace the hard things, even when it's not, yeah, when it's not easy, when it's hard. Yeah. And so like, I just, what's the hard thing? And I do it. I don't yeah. know. I don't, and like, there could be, a, and there's some days I feel like every moment is a hard moment and I have to do it. And yeah. there's some days that like, some things are easy, some things are hard. Yeah. Um, I don't think I have any days that like just everything was easy. Um, and I, Yeah. Like, I, I don't, I don't know if I just have ADHD, like I might have other things too, but, um, I know that the ADHD interferes with my life the most. Mm-hmm. Um, but that doesn't mean that it stops me from doing things. Mm-hmm. Cause like the kids in, and, and maybe this is, and I, I get, I get nervous about wording it, how, like talking about how I handle things sometimes, because I don't mean to put that standard on others. Mm. Cause like it took me a while to get to this point. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm never going to let my ADHD prevent me from being the husband and father that my family needs me to be. Mm. And I think that, and I'm not, I know that if I were to wallow in my symptoms and, and get um, like caught up in like, I can't do this. This is too hard for me. Or like my brain isn't wired for this. Like I don't have any stars. Like I could easily yeah. get into the, into it and say like, well, this is the father you have. You have a father with ADHD who just can't do these things and you can't just force him to do yeah. it. Right. And like, I know like you have a, you have a father who has ADHD, but he absolutely has the choice to go do the hard thing. He may not have any fun playing chess with you today. He may absolutely hate it, but you're not going to know that mm-hmm. right? you're going to, and you're going to have a father who's present and he's going to be doing the things who's going to be super exhausted and he's going to do it anyway. Like I, and that, that's absolutely a choice. So like I, and I don't know how else you get that without doing the hard, just saying, I'm going to do things when they get hard. Like yeah. and to me, an indication I need to do a thing is that like, oh, this is going to be really hard for me. Like, oh, you got to do it then. Yeah. Um, one of, uh, and, and sorry, back to like, how do I, when things get hard, like the, these secular people like David Goggins and Cameron Haynes, um, those have been. Um, and motivation is not the right word, but like they've given me like other anchor quotes to like mm-hmm. push forward on like when things get hard. So one of Cameron Haynes, if you don't know who he is, like you can look him up. Um, last name is H A N E S. I think now I spelled my name, I spelled it wrong, but he's a bow hunter, but also like super into fitness and, and has uh, somewhat of a social, like huge social media, um, presence, somewhat of like not really a big personality, but one of his quotes that he said in his book is, um, yeah. So one of his quotes that seems like it's a little too much, but I, I love it is uh, nobody cares work harder because one of the things that I think you do when you have ADHD, because I do it a ton, is that like you um, like you project what you think a particular achievement is going to gain you in the future. So mm, like, oh, mm-hmm. look, I'm going to be, I used to do this as a kid all the time. Like, oh, if, if only I get this, um, like get this particular accolade, then everyone's going to know I did it. And then they're going to see me differently. Like I want to be perceived differently in social situations. Like if I only, you know, if I'm a champion at this, people are going to love me. Like mm-hmm. if I'm a champion at that. 
And I remember doing that. And like, so um, you end up living in the future rather than living in the present. So like, oh, if I work out a lot and I can lift 500 pounds, like, oh, people are going to write like, oh, and then you start it, it, daydreaming about that and thinking about yeah. that. Um, and the reality is nobody cares. Like, nope. And, and it's sad as that sounds like people see you and you're working. Like, no one cares that like I'm doing jujitsu. No one cares that I'm lifting. No one cares that I have a podcast. Well, some people do. But like most people, like they yeah. don't, they they care about who you are in the present, right? And and they care about like their interactions, um, and so like one of the things, like I should not be seeking to like do these great things because they're going to give me status. Yeah. Like nobody right, cares. Right, right. And at the same time, like I shouldn't be l- like looking at all my weaknesses and like bringing them up to people. Like this is why I can't. Like, yeah. Like, nobody cares. Like the yeah. kids don't care. Like you don't care that yeah. I'm having. It, it's and, and I know it sounds so harsh, but like the reality is like you need me to be able to do X. And you're a loving, compassionate wife, but like you also need me to do this. Yeah. So like if I always gave you the excuse like of ADHD, like you don't care that much because you need this done. Like you need me to love you. Is my ADHD an excuse not to love you? Absolutely not. Like you no, I have to work. So like the, the nobody cares work harder to me is not degrading to me. I think it is more of like, okay, I gotta do it. Yeah. And I, I don't I'm not And it's like a reminder, it like puts you in it back into reality instead yes. of fantasy. Yes. Right. Like it mm-hmm. puts in, because I could do fantasy. Like, sorry, I talked about the fantasy and like the great things. I can yeah. also do that with the bad things. Like, right. Oh, I, like I can't do this. Like I'm never going to be able to, I mm-hmm. can't get this done. And like, you can just wallow in forever. Like I, and I'm neither ones. I'm not living in the present. Like, yes. no, just this is where I am. Yeah. Um, and the same with like Jocko Willings, uh, discipline equals freedom. Like all those, all those little yeah. sayings and all those, and I've, I've, I'm, I've read their books. I listened to the books and the podcast like that stuff has helped me do hard things. Yeah. Um, there in like the flip side of that is like, I've learned strategies so that, um, I have less moments like that, like mm. less things, less moments that are like, this is really hard. And I have to get through it. So like there's ways of managing, but inevitably, inevitably I'm going to meet a hard moment throughout the day. Mm-hmm. And I ha- do you know how hard it was? Listen, lady, do you know how hard it was to have one Excuse mini me. s'more? I just had one mini s'more. One mini s'more. Listen, like yes. I, that's such a win for me. Yes. I did not finish the box. Yes, I didn't make five mini s'mores into no. one master s'more. The la- no, and this is another thing that's hard with ADHD. The last time we had that box of graham crackers, like that brand, mm-hmm. I finished the whole thing after youth group. I just done. Yeah. They were just gone because the graham crackers, like the I'm texture. a big texture guy. The texture yeah. gives me a huge dopamine hit. Like there's a lot of a lot of that. Um, and all the Hershey's, oh, I could have just, and I didn't, yeah. I just had one and that was hard, but yeah. I, and it's like moving, it's like acknowledging the, like that feeling mm-hmm. like that high and that desire to like, oh, like to keep going and to keep eating and to keep having that like mm-hmm. satisfaction. And you're like, okay, this moment is going to end mm-hmm. like this moment of temptation or like desire or yeah. whatever, uh, hyper fixation or the the moment of lack of motivation or like all these, these different, like, and it's the thing with ADHD, at least from my outside perspective is that you've read a lot of books there too, to support our kids. Mm-hmm, so. That like, it's not that you feel or experience things that neurotypical people don't experience. It's just like to the extreme, mm-hmm. like, and more frequently. So like when a neurotypical person is unmotivated, Let's say like to get up in the morning and go exercise. Like, oh, I don't really feel like it, but, but it's, and then you just like, you slowly go do it and then eventually it gets done. But like with ADHD, it's just to like the fullest extreme of unmotivation. But it's, I yell at myself as I'm getting like, why are you doing this? You idiot. <laughs> Look at you with your dang discipline. Like I'm not happy with myself as I'm getting up. Very rude to yourself. You, there's a lot of stupid expletives. Stupid alarm. What yep. are you doing? Yeah. There's so a bad. lot of expletives. You could just be sleeping right now. It, there's so much. And, and it's just like, sometimes it's, sometimes the strategy is just going and doing the thing because eventually those extreme feelings are going to stop. Mm-hmm. Like they, they just aren't going to be there anymore. You'll move on to the next thing. Um, I think one of the things that, sorry, so going to like doing hard things. So how do we like with our children that do not like to do hard things and are really resistant mm-hmm. to doing hard things? Um, one of our kids it's, it's now a routine and it's kind of, it's almost comical to me cause it's sweet. They look at me, it's, it's getting ready to go to jujitsu class too. Cause the summer we just, that's like the one commitment that we have that's regular. 
and they look up at me and they're like, mommy, I don't want to go to jujitsu. And I know what you're going to say to me. I know you don't want to go to (laughs) (laughs) jujitsu because I tell you that every time. And what are we going to do? We're going to go to jujitsu. It's it's, the conversation started. I don't want to go. I know you don't want to go. We're going anyway. And because, and we talk about because it's good for you and because you actually do like it when you're there or because you are getting stronger because your, your brain Mm -hmm. is getting more confident. And like, we talk about the good things and that still does not motivate them to Mm -hmm. go. Like you can have that hype. Like I, I'm a good hype woman. Like I can, I can rah, rah, rah. And that does not change in that moment. That motivation is not there. Mm -mm. And that child still just has to go. Mm -hmm. And now they are learning to just go like that. I'm just like, I know, honey, you're, Mm -hmm. you're never going to want to go. (laughs) And I've tried. And sometimes it's worked with like, I've been able, and I think I did it once though in this whole time, I've been able to, to get them to this child (laughs) to change their emotional place mm-hmm. like where they are emotionally so mm-hmm. like to feel very loved and then i get a joke and then like yeah and then they were fine yeah this is just so interesting because like mo- like giving them all the positives doesn't like, matter but like all of a sudden like i'm happy because daddy said this and yep. this is funny and, like, well and the thing that that moves them like that gets their feet physically moving is a snack mm-hmm. like that's my strat because you two have your own little mm-hmm. your own little relationship where you can make them giggle and you give them their quality time love language. But on Wednesdays, you are not here. For that. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, a similar just texture, food, yep. some sort of snack. We just know that that child has to take their time picking out which texture they want. Usually it's a granola bar, but not always. So you can't just assume that it's that. And that will get them moving. You know what I love? What do you love? Recently. So I, like, I love the salty taste of like, like liquid IV has a little salty taste, mm. but then like element. Do you remember yeah. that? Um, that <sighs> had a thousand milligrams of sodium in the, in the serving. Um, so you do that before exercising, which sorry, this is, I'm going to go on a tangent. No, I'm not going to talk about sodium before exercising, but like you should look into it. Um, but the, <laughs> there's also this thing with ADHD that you just get hyper focused into some nerdy thing and you learn all about it. And... All about it. Um, <laughs> but so, like, I right before jujitsu, how I get myself because, mm-hmm. like, I'm it's I go, I go, especially on Wednesdays, like, I go at 6 30 in the morning, then I go to work, and then I go again at yep. night. I'm so tired. I love it, but I'm tired. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do it. Um, so one of the things is like, I do liquid iv and then i have a little extra salt and the salty taste like i love it you're so weird i guess so like it's it and it but there's also the connection now between that and like all right i'm gonna do jiu-jitsu and it's yeah yeah like that motivates so like that's it uh, so yeah so i will just do the hard thing and yeah. it's good to teach our kids just do the hard thing but then also i do have tools yeah. so that if i know a thing is going to be hard i yes can get myself ready to be able to do it. So it's not as hard to do. And I think we want to do the same for our kids. Yeah. Um, And I think even within our marriage, like you, I, I, was it today? I don't know how many times you you remind me to do the litter box. Um, But like (laughs) when, when, so like, Oh, cleaning my side of the bed, I had a ton of laundry. I haven't unpacked from Orlando yet. No, nope, the, the suitcase is still it's, at the it, bottom it's, of the bed. It's, it's getting it's slowly, slowly. It's slowly getting unpacked. Like as you need something, you take it out. Look at <laughs> look at the strategies. But but you've learned that my point was going to be like you've learned to be patient with like. With there that. are certain things that just are just going to be. Yeah, but but it's not. But it's because, and I don't I don't know if you see it this way. I would love for you to see it this way. But <laughs> to me, and it sounds so it sounds so ridiculous coming out of my mouth. But like it's either like I could be present to the kids right now. Yep. Or I can go do my laundry, back, my my laundry, yep. and unpack. But like I don't. I can do both, but it would make it just makes my it would make things so much harder for me. So like, see, and I don't. And I think that might be one of those one of the spaces. Like you came home and you were like, I was reminded that ADHD is a disability. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With this trip, I was reminded that it's a disability. There are things that I actually cannot do. Right. So you could not like will yourself out of feeling depressed. Yes. True. I feel like that's one of those situations where you could not 
actually be present to the kids and doing your laundry, like, mm-hmm. and like fixing up all that side. You could fake it. You could pretend True. and like have yeah. the kids be involved, but you wouldn't, mm-hmm. you would not actually be able to do both. Okay. Yes. And like, I agree. And I think that that's like, sometimes you just have to do the hard thing, but that doesn't mean that you're necessarily like fully engaged in it mm-hmm. or fo- like there's just certain like the job gets done but there might not have been that like like i i used to want you to want to do the dishes like that line mm-hmm. from the jennifer aniston movie and like i just have to, thank you Vince Vaughn. i just have to realize <laughs> i just have to realize that that's not going to happen like you will do them because i ask them and you'll be like i will do them because you hate the pots and pans and i love you but you're never going to want to do the pots and pans mm-hmm. because i hate them and whatever like it's just not there's not that capacity to get there Mm -hmm. right and i think that that's that's like a silly example but there are certain things that like with adhd yes you just have to do it but that like you just have to accept that sometimes you're not going to end up enjoying it or you're not going Mm -hmm. to like i want to will the i don't know like the habit or the I, i don't know like no you waking up is not a habit anymore it's not a habit it's just like i that's what I told myself I was going to do. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to do it. And I never like it. Never like it. And that's something that with yeah. David Goggins, like he's, he, in his podcast and in his interviews, he says that he hates waking up in the morning to run and he hates running. Yeah. But he does it. Yeah. But now he's crazy. I would not do what he does. <laughs> but like I, one of the things he, like he does it because he doesn't like it. He, he wakes up in the, in the morning. He just stares at his shoes. Like I got to go do this again. At least like that made me feel very, it made me feel less alone in that. Like I, feel like that about a lot of things that I do, but I still do them. Yes. And I think sometimes, at least with our kids or um, as a teacher, like you wanted to like achieve them finally, like that light bulb moment of like getting it. And suddenly their life is so different because they finally figured out why doing homework was important or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, no, they might never ever like unlock that thing Mm -hmm the thing that the achievement is that they choose to do the hard thing. They choose to do the thing that they're not motivated. One of the, one of our other kids, he can be so, one of our other kids, they can be so grouchy. Mm -hmm. Like if one thing does not go the way they wanted it to, they are so grouchy about it. And it's simple, simple things. And we've had to start talking to them about like, you cannot have that face on. Mm -hmm. I know that you're upset. I know you're disappointed. I know that you're grouchy. It's going to take you 30 minutes to move on, but you cannot glare (laughs) at the entire world (laughs) for the next 30 minutes. Oh my goodness. I just said, all I'll ask them to do this morning (laughs) is after mass is that take all the stuffed animals and the extra pair of shoes that you have packed in the van, because they just pack them under where they're sitting, under their feet. I said, take them out of the car. So there's too many for him to do. There's too many for them to do by him. I'm going to say him. There's too many for him to do by himself. So brothers offered to help, and they're just helping. And he's yes. screaming because you can't take them out. I said to take them yes. out. You and the brothers were willingly yes. helping. And there's so much. And then he's just grouchy about it. So. But like you you can't just start hoarding in the van. That's also another ADHD thing though. Listen, it's not hoarding. Hoarding. It's called stacking. (laughs) That's what Huberman called it, stacking. Stacking. We organize by stacking things in a way that only makes sense to us. What's that one? um, Connor Wolf. Connor, I think it's Connor Wolf. That's a funny Instagram to follow. And he talks about ADHD, but like knowing exactly where everything is, but it just being a disaster. I've had that. I've had that. I think we've had that discussion before, um, or argument. I forgot how. It was. Or, honestly, I may have never even. <laughs> what said anything. adjective? I may have not even be? said anything to you ever because I felt like and it doesn't and make this sense. Internal. Yeah, argument. well, because I'm like, because I'm like, yeah, you're probably. I'm right. a little nervous. Because okay, I've said me. no, because I because there's been times where like you've put things away, mm-hmm. 
and I don't know where they are anymore because I don't know where a way is. <laughs> but like, and I'll be like, it, where did you, and I'll, it'll yeah, be a random, you'll say where or something. I'll be like, I put it away. I'm like, where's that? <laughs> <laughs> and I've, and I've, I think I've said to you before, like when you clean something up, can you just tell me you cleaned it so that I know it's not in my paperclip spot, right? Like there's, cause like the, like one of his things in his, on Instagram was, um, that like oh there's a I know where a paper clip is and like you it's like below under a car <laughs> yeah. or under a car under a chair under a um, couch cushion and that, that happened what were we doing that you I was like we were opening something and I said get the scissors and you're like where are the scissors and I like I pointed out they were like on a shelf or something do you remember that <laughs> no. where was I was that at work oh that was at work <laughs> that was at work it was actually Robbie it <laughs> was actually at Robbie it was actually Robbie <laughs> no so we were opening um pallets of, for something. Now, we, so we went down now, to, now you've returned to the location so we, yes i can see it so we went down to the mail room to get some things to bring them back up and as we were doing that i noticed a pair of scissors on the shelf yeah and then i was like oh there's scissors there and then we go down and then we go back up and then we have to cut something open to open the pallets because they were in yep. certain like saran wrap type things not saran wrap but they were like wrapped yeah, up yeah. in things and i was like and i, I don't know what him or i said like we should get scissors I was like oh there's scissors right there. like i just remembered yeah. There were scissors in this random spot. Yes. And that's, and that's amazing were. though, because you could walk through this house and like step over a hundred things and not notice yes. that they're there yes. <laughs> like on the floor. That's so I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know why. You really, really, I, that's one thing I've come to learn. It's like, you really don't actually see those things. Well, there's things. two things. Oh man, this is another thing. No, no, there's, it, it's, it could be that I'm just stepping over, but it could also be that I'm doing task mm-hmm. a yep and i need to finish task a before i move on to the yep. next task otherwise if you stopped task a would never get completed no and then i'll move on to the next. so like yeah. there's been times where and it's i hate talking about it like this because i feel i feel like i sound like a crazy person but like it'll be like so if i'm making you coffee there's been so many times where i'll make you coffee mm-hmm. but then the kids ask for a thing mm-hmm. and then i go help them and yep. then that that triggers another thing oh i have to wash this dish yep and then you're like where's my coffee I'm like oh i forgot to finish it yeah but it's not like I, it's not because that can happen to anybody but right. it's this like extreme it happens all the time yes though. it ha- in 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 to the point that like i that it's so, like if you don't finish the coffee from beginning to end, it will not get nope, done. Like yep. you will not return to the task. Nope. Period. Or, or I'll finish the ta- I'll like half finish the task. So like there's been like when I don't stir the sugar. Mm-hmm. So like and that's because like so I like I and that'll that'll be because I did everything, put the sugar in, put the spoon in, someone interrupted me, I come mm-hmm. back and I'm like, Oh, I have to bring her coffee. Yep. But I forgot that I didn't stir. So like yep. so even when I come back to the task, like it's not fully Yeah. Like I don't remember what step I was on. I have to I have to really think about it i yeah if you look at me i'm not like this i i (laughs) I promise i can like if you are if you are my employer i promise you i this actually does not happen at work because things are very clear what i need to be doing yeah i just do them it's like these little things at home and like in social world but it's like if you get interrupted in your shower you almost have to restart the shower from beginning to end because you don't remember if you lost your hair you're never in there with me i don't know i just interrupt sometimes (laughs) you're oh welcome you know, you know you know embarrassing i was like did i wash my hair <laughs> stop I like legitimately don't just remember just keep washing it over and over no yeah does that answer the questions i don't even know i, don't know. I hope people found this interesting i, hope I don't know responds. <laughs> it's like this is this was not helpful i'm never emailing you guys again never okay. again um if you're open to sharing oh do you use or have you used medication I have not used medication um, because when I asked for it, it's so frustrating. So, okay. So I have a lot of feelings about medication. Number one, um, I'm not against medication per se. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think that there's thresh- there's there's definitely, sorry, there's, I believe that there's um, a spectrum of ADHD mm-hmm. as well. So like, I think there's certain people who do have ADHD who have less uh, tools mm-hmm. and ability to control things, right? And I think they would benefit from medication. I don't think this is, again. This is my personal opinion, not a professional one. I only have a BA in psychology, so take it for what it's worth. But I do think that, like, if you are doing medications, it's important to also have a therapist that's working on tools for you mm-hmm. because the medication, though it like it, it'll the one of the theories is that like it stimulates the whole brain, so like it's all. Mm-hmm. working at the same time versus like one part's working and the other's not. Um, though that'll help. 
if you don't have good tools, like you're not going to be able to still not be able to implement things. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's separate. And you also may run out of your medication, like your dose is lower at night and then you still got to talk to people if you're human and mm-hmm. you're married and like, there's still things you have to be able to do with your medication. Um, so that's one thing. Like, I do think it's beneficial to certain people. I do think you should, if you do it, do it in tandem with therapy. But for mm-hmm. myself, I didn't get on medication because um, when I asked for it, the doc, my my physician, my primary physician, he refused to prescribe it unless I got started going to therapy. That's why I ended up going to therapy mm-hmm. and got diagnosed and everything. But then when I asked for it, he said he wouldn't do it unless he's unless I got cleared by a cardiologist. Mm-hmm. And then like that just became, so to me it was like more roadblocks. I don't want to do this. And I also didn't want to go see a psychiatrist because I just, I, I, I work with too many of them. So like, I didn't want to go to a psychiatrist. So I, was like, I so I just ended up not wanting to do it. And I just did the therapy and then I stopped the therapy because I, though she, she did give me good advice, but then she started showing up late, which was really annoying to me. So I was like, if you're going to have ADHD, I don't need to talk to you. Okay. I didn't say that. But it started showing up late and like, I just, it was hard to fit in in the first place. And then for her to be 30 minutes late to my 45 minute session yeah. when I only have a, like an hour to, to do, like you can't do that to me. So I, that ended up stopping. Um, but what was good is some of the things she gave me were really good. Um, and then with those tools, I've been able to put together other tools that have really helped me manage my ADHD, I mm-hmm. think very well. Um, because again, I'm very, like I'm able to do things at work like so fine f- um career wise like i'm able to function a lot better than i used to mm-hmm. um i think emotionally I, I can at least recognize when i'm in not a good state and i can cope better mm-hmm. um I, again like orlando i would not have been able to do yeah two three years ago like, no. i would have had a complete meltdown and i'm yeah. not joking like i get panicky like i yeah it, it, it would have been really really bad if i had not had the coping skills i have now so like a lot of Sorry, and I don't know if coping skills is the right word. Like, I'm not just coping. Like, I'm managing and getting by. Like, yeah. I'm, get, I'm managing and getting through. Like, I'm not and just getting like, by. And also, like, I'm, I'm rec- slowly... recognizing and, like, identifying, being able to articulate, mm-hmm. even to yourself. Yep. Like, this is what I'm feeling isn't necessarily reality or, mm-hmm. like, um, I just, I feel like so many things that we've done and discovered in our relationship, like, through through our time together in marriage Mm -hmm. has also contributed. So like things like, um, Brene Brown and like all the different terms that you can use for your feelings, like being able to identify actually how you're feeling, Mm -hmm. um, learning more about ADHD versus depression versus anxiety and how they, they're, they're a lot of comorbidities, but Mm -hmm. like which one is kind of causing the other at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, having some more tools, um, and, and just like a better self-awareness, um, things like that. One of the, he had a couple follow-up questions to medication, but, um, are there other things like caffeine that help instead of medication? So, oh, so I can say that. So what I, I, so I take a pre-workout to actually on the days that I exercise. So right now I exercise Monday, Tuesday, I am off. I don't lift on Wednesday. Um, but I still do just two, two days, two days that day. And then I lift Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then I'm completely off on Sunday and the days that I lift. So that's Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I take a pre-workout that has 150, no, 175 milligrams of caffeine in it. Mm-hmm. So like, it's not a crazy amount. Um, and then on Sundays I have coffee. So I also gave up coffee for Lent. Yeah. give up coffee all together. Um, even on Sunday, cause I'm a better Catholic than you. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. So I, g- I gave up. No, because if I do that, then I, <laughs> no, cause if I did it, then I, then give I'd up, stop then giving I'd give, it up. Yeah. No, so it's actually cause I'm a worse Catholic than you. Um, no, but then I, so I, um, and then after Lent, I decided that on Sundays only I would have one cup of coffee in the morning. So mm-hmm. I started doing that. Um, because you used caffeine a lot. Oh yeah. Cause I would drink four four, five, six cups of coffee a day. Easy. Plus yeah. my pee workout. I don't know how I'm alive. Um, <laughs> but so like the, in terms of medication, like so I, so cleared by a cardiologist as well. Right, Look plus, at that. I, to say that too. Be like, I drink so much coffee or whatever. Um, but so like I'll take the pre-workout in the morning. I don't get jitters and like, I don't get hype from the no. pre-workout. I actually, it it's, gives you a pump, it's but wild. whatever it gives you yeah. a pump when you're lifting, whatever. But, uh, so like I enjoy the pre-workout. Um, 
but that's about in terms of like any meds. Like that's the only yeah. thing that's considered a stimulant that I take. Um, I don't take anything else. I feel honestly, the thing that's stimulating my brain the most though has been jujitsu mm-hmm. like, like, to an extent that I can't describe Like, it's just like, yeah. I feel cause like pre-workout and exercising, like lifting, that was like unlocking one level of mm-hmm. being like, okay, if I start my day, yep doing this then my days are better Mm -hmm. and then when you started jujitsu you're like these days are even better yeah like right Mm -hmm. yeah you can definitely see the difference well like and also i'm speaking for as somebody who hasn't taken medication before it's like i wonder if i were to take it if i would have those like oh my brain is so much more on right like i i wonder but at the same time i and this i wouldn't recommend this for everybody because again you're you're not me everyone's different but i like the path that i took because it has forced me to to be so much more disciplined yeah. and do more things. Like yes. maybe maybe I didn't have to be. I'm not saying you don't have to be if you're if you're on medication. Like I yeah. don't know. Um, but I know at least that the path that I've taken to be where I am at right now, like it's required that I do a lot of yeah. these other things so I can get And I mind. think that you have because of this like the combination of so many things, ADHD plus your personality, plus the way that you grew up and all these things that like I do think that you could have been a person that would like one, if you had learned about an ADHD diagnosis earlier in life, you would have used it as an excuse for like, and we said that last episode, like you would have used an excuse for why it's okay for certain behaviors. And I also do think that you could have had a bad relationship with meds. Mm. Be, like if you had tried this earlier or di- mm-hmm. like hadn't created this level of discipline because mm-hmm. you'd be like, well, I didn't take my meds today or yeah. Like I've got to take it. I, I have to take another dose of meds because today's going to be a really hard day or yeah. whatever. And I do. I think that that's. I mean, it was. It was. Show, you could see it in like your caffeine addiction at one point. And I think that that can be a danger for some people that don't understand their brain mm. and their ADHD or their neurodivergence. Because I do think that like addiction is a big thing yep. for people with ADHD that they are searching for coping strategies because of the comorbidities of depression and anxiety and things like that. So drugs and alcohol fix that in the moment and they Mm -hmm. make me feel better in the moment. And then I have to keep searching for that. And because of, you know, my, my lower dopamine and, Mm -hmm. and like the way the dopamine is working and not working in your brain, then like you have these extreme highs and lows. And so, I think that, you know, if this is something that you've turned to other things for yeah, to try to cope that like, yeah, maybe medication again, That's along with therapy yeah, yeah. could be some like, could again, we are not no. professionals, That's but really like point. could be a route to take because it would help with that regulation while you're searching for mm. like, I want discipline in my life, but I have no freaking clue how to get to that That's and really like things like that. So I we are not like anti-med. It just was like when the diagnosis happened, we had already been starting to put some of the, well, you, but like me me supporting you, but like putting some of these things in place that you're like, I, yeah, well, they also put so many roadblocks in front of it. Like, I think the roadblocks are mostly why, and I'm grateful for them because, yeah. Yeah. So I, we're, we're certainly not anti-med, but it's just like, meds alone can are not going to right. change your life though either mm-hmm. like you have you have the choice to make to do things or not do things yeah. and what have you yeah um yeah and they asked um would we consider that for our children um absolutely meds I, yeah, yeah i i'm not i'm mean, again i'm not opposed um there's like there's some things that I like I don't expect that because they're they're young and even like thinking through, um, like middle school and high school like there's there's a lot that I don't know if I could have willed myself to do mm-hmm. at that age, mm-hmm. and some things like so like again I have to will myself to do these very silly things like if we can leave, if the if the meds could get them away from needing needing to will themselves to get dressed in the morning right or like. Mm-hmm. You need to will them. it's exhausting. It's exhausting. And like, there's yeah. no need, like there's, they're, they're not gaining anything by, they know they got to get dressed and I know they do it. They have the discipline. Okay. And, and I guess that's, that's the thing too, is like that we, we try to be very disciplined with them. Like they, they, 
when they're asked to do things, they do them. Mm-hmm. We, we harp on them a lot. Um, and we love them very much. We really try to like put everything in the foundation of like, we love you regardless of, of how you perform and do. Um, I would love to be able to take the edge off their needing to pick like what outfit do I pick out? Like that's, that's silly. Like yeah. that's not a thing. That's you need like to unnecessary right. no, pressure I, and anxiety yeah. or whatever. Like do your homework and finish your assignment. Absolutely. But like what shoes do, do these shoes match this? Like, I, I, mm-hmm. like that's, I just know that's another thing like matching clothes. Like I hate yeah. trying to figure out what to wear every day. Yeah. So like I would to like a whole different level. To, yeah. Yeah. So like I, I would, yeah. And like, yeah. So I'm to okay. eliminate that so that they could like go to school and learn yes. <laughs> instead right, of being right. worried and like, about and, and then yeah. do the social things that are hard. And like, yeah. yeah. So I, I would, I think the meds would help with that. And I, I'd be okay with that. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then like, we're not like, at that point right now, no. but if we were, yeah. Mm-hmm. I also think too, like with kids when they, when they are met with puberty, like there's just, that's just like a whole other layer of things happening in your, in your body mm-hmm. that you're not, not that you're like a victim to, but like, there's just things that are mm-hmm. changing. Well, I would say if like, and if say if things got to a point that they were, that they were preventing them from having a full happy life. Mm-hmm. Cause I, I don't see it. It's like inter interfering with like little parts of it, but like for the most part, they live a very oh, good yeah. whole full life. So like yeah. if I started seeing, Oh, sorry, I'm saying I, but like I, I don't know if I'd pick it up sooner. I, I don't. I don't think so. I think you'd pick it up before me because you're home with them. But like, if they start being unable to interact and and live within their home and their friend groups normally, yeah. like then I would say like, hey, this is something worth considering, or even start going to therapy first to see if like they can start getting new skills that we can't give them. Yeah. Right. But yeah, as of right now, like the things that we are, have been doing are working, and they're they're still thriving. So I, I'm not. Yeah. I'm comfortable. This is like a subpar analogy, but, um, but it, but ADHD being a disability, I mean, it's similar to other like health things that could come up. So Hmm. diabetes, right? So like there's, depending on where on the spectrum and, and things like that, like you have to adjust your diet and then you have, and then there's also like using insulin. What's that? Type two. Okay. Right, type two diabetes. You're saying because like type one, there's no spectrum. Okay, you just, you just need the insulin. Yes. Sorry. So, but ju- like there are just so many things. There's so mm-hmm. many factors that yep. you can adjust. That medication is not the only one, and then sometimes you mm-hmm. don't need mm-hmm. it. You know, and so, um, yeah. So just like working on where where are we in this in mm-hmm. this time and space, and and how is your life being impacted by your ADHD. Mm-hmm. Um, and how can we help you be successful? I mm-hmm. think, and I think that we haven't even closed the door of you ever like needing ADHD meds as possibility. You know, we've mm-hmm. talked about that. Like, um, there were ta- like in your, in your previous job, you were like, could I be doing better if I had, if I had meds mm-hmm. and stuff? So, we, it, you know, it was definitely, it's definitely like something that it's so interesting. Well, returns I, you know to what's, conversation. You know what's great though. Well, I don't want, oh, people don't know where I work yet. Um, <laughs> But like one of the things that has been hugely beneficial is the the remote work balance mm-hmm. with remote and in person. Like it, yeah. that's helped me. I I really think that I'm thriving in the job because that, that for many reasons. But that's one of them is that like I'm that that balance of like the amount of days in the office mm-hmm. and the amount of days home has helped me really be able to like go all in when I'm in the office. Yeah. Um. Because I'm not. Because so I know up. I'm not going to be exhausted on 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 like the on the next day yeah right because especially because like i know it's a limited time so i'll just go all in and then because yeah. like when i'm home i get to i'm I'm replenishing my stars here yeah so i'm able to just use all of them up and yeah and not be because typically in a typical work day if i'm there five days a week i would i personally would withhold yeah because I, I need to make i need it to, to maintain Friday. right and that was one of the hard things about mm-hmm. orlando was you're like this feels I'm on almost whole time. <laughs> like for so long, yep. it just feels almost, it almost feels indefinite mm-hmm. again because of those extreme feelings I that you're just like, like this I is how never, it is forever. I'm never going home. Yeah. Never and forever are the two, are the yes. two words, right? It's always been this way mm-hmm. and stuff. So yeah. yeah. I hope that someone listened to this whole thing. <laughs> I feel like I just rambled and shared my heart. That made no sense. That like it's really, it's super embarrassing uh, to talk about like just how many how many things are happening in my brain. But our 
our hope with these conversations though that was a very authentic that was hopefully it's clear that that was unscripted but um we call our episodes that are unscripted yeah um i just i just know though the like the frustration that we were in a few years ago, not knowing anything about ADHD, mm-hmm. never really have. I mean, I had heard about it as a teacher, but again, like it was the, it was the little boys in class at Kansas still like, that's what it was to me and, and to you, you know, mm-hmm. before learning more about it and like just being able to understand you better and for you to understand, I think it even gave you insight into some of the things that we argued about. And you're like, Oh, now I understand why that was so frustrating because that's not how normal, like that's not how a yeah. neurotypical person thinks and sees the world. And... See, I'm fine with the word normal. Okay. Normal and not normal. Cause I know, I'd feel very, but like some people might not and feel like offended. I'm like, I'm, I'm a unique butterfly. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Butterfly. But I, I, there was just so much, frustration in our marriage and like interpersonally in our relationship that Mm -hmm. not just is explained by it, but now can be like addressed and like we can, we can go about it in, in the right way instead of just beating our heads against the wall of like, Mm -hmm. why can we not figure this out? Like answering phone calls, man. Oh, I'm sorry. (laughs) But like one, sorry, I, we're not, I don't even know where you you were saying. (laughs) I just started thinking about other things I struggle with. (laughs) I'm pretty sure you were wrapping things up, but, (laughs) but so one of the things that I struggle with that I didn't mention yet is that, so there's times where I get a text message or a call and I just don't have energy for it. Mm -hmm. There's times where I get a text message and I have energy for a text message. But then when that person decides to call me, I'm like, dude, I don't have that energy. I have the text message energy. I have texting energy. Um, And then there's also like, and then some people I'm like, I have to call. And that's usually because like, I need to get a thing done right away. So there's like a quick, like, there's Mm -hmm. a procrastination and then there's a deadline. So like now all of a sudden everything's charged up. So like in terms of you were, I think you were saying something about like understanding me better. That's one of the things. (laughs) That's one more thing I understand better. Go on. I'm sorry. Um, Yeah, no, I just, I hope that this is like another, yeah, conversation starter for couples that if you feel like there's just, you haven't had the words to articulate Mm -hmm. why you're not fully understanding the other person. But if, sorry, for the couples, I didn't mean to say sorry, though I am interrupting. Um, Like it may not be ADHD, but like it could be anything mental health related, anything family history related. Because I think at least... I hope one of the things that comes across, even if you're like, I don't even understand Renzo's whatever he's rambling about, um, is that like every one, both of you, every one of you, everyone in the relationship, you, the both of you have like a deep inner life and deep experiences mm-hmm. and deep stories and things that you 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 experience that are super unique to you that your spouse will have no idea you're living all of that, mm-hmm. right? Because I could easily have kept all, like I could have, I could have made the choice to to mask this to you too. Mm-hmm. It, it it's obviously a lot harder because but I, but i like part of me not doing things around the house is me being comfortable here because it's my home with you yep right but i could have gone into marriage and just tried to mask everything so like i would have acted as though i would i act outside of the home mm-hmm. that would have been a bad marriage um and the same for anybody who maybe you don't have adhd but you have other things that you two aren't fully sharing and, and fully expressing what the lived experience is like to be you. Mm-hmm. Um, that's important to share. That's important to, to let the other person in on and they're not going to get it the first time. They're not going to get it the hundredth time, but like to continue to let them know, like, this is how I work. This is mm-hmm. how I function. Not as an excuse, but more for like an ability for them to understand yes. who this person is that they're yes. marrying. So when they go about making life changes, you can appreciate mm-hmm. the depth of the difficulty of doing that. Mm-hmm. And that you're like, wow, you are doing this out of love because I know that this is not natural to you. Mm-hmm. It's not easy for you. Like you are choosing this. This is not like, mm-hmm. this is not, this is not just how you are. And, um, and that you can like, yeah, you can appreciate the, those things on a different level. Like not, oh, that's nice. But like, wow, this is, this is a deep sacrifice to be putting in this discipline and hard work to change our marriage to change Mm -hmm. our relationship and i i and just for you to like see your spouse right we talk about like naked without shame right we've and and 
that being part of the call to marriage is like this is part of being naked Mm -hmm. in front of your spouse without shame like being very vulnerable with all of the inner workings that you have in you um so that they can just come to know and love you better yeah um and and then to start to like acknowledge that in them too you know when i when i see you working on things i'm gonna i'm gonna cheer for you i'm gonna say thank you for doing that i'm gonna say that was great you know so that you feel that you feel like somebody noticed Mm. the hard thing yeah thank you guys for listening i listened to that wrap up did you i did my third wrap up that was great that's a good one it's great but thank you guys for listening thank you for being here I hope you got something out of this. Let us know. Please let us know. Send us an email uh, to becomefamily at gmail.com or follow us on Instagram. And review the podcast. Review the podcast, please. And thank you again to our patron. And thank you to our patron, Rebecca. We appreciate you. Okay. That's it. That's it? That's it. Thank you, everyone. We will see you at the next episode.